Well, welcome everyone. And it really should be said, you I don't think you can look around Atlanta and find anyone who has had more of a lasting impact on the arts than Sue and, and her family. Uh, they just they are financial supporters, they are enthusiasm supporters, they truly live the arts. And a quick introduction for those who don't know Arts ATL. Uh, it is a nonprofit news outlet and the only place in Atlanta that you can find comprehensive coverage of the arts. So artsatl.com, uh, we are a nonprofit, so we do uh, hope that you read. We also hope that you support our work. Um, so we're going to talk about film today. So really quick, I'm going to introduce the panelists and then we'll start the discussion. So a late edition. Rob Walker Broncho. Uh, Alex Orr unfortunately had a, a set that flooded today. So Rob, <laughs> uh, pr prayers for Alex and great thanks uh, to Rob for coming in. Rob is a producer, an actor, um, a, a, a gentleman all the way around for, for joining us and, and for tolerating me uh, pulling you up on stage when, when you had like 30 seconds of, of prep. Um, Lance Crawl, an actor, creator, writer, um, has moved back to Atlanta to start Picture It Productions, heads up TV there, has sold several shows, has several more that are about to, to sell, um, or are in the works, let's say. Let's be coy. Um, and then Karen Cisse, an actress, writer, creator, uh, director a little bit. She does everything. She does everything. And Lee Thomas, who is the deputy commissioner uh, for film at the state. And so just to, um, to start us off, kind of a, an easy conversation starter. So I'm curious, for, for you all, why are you in Atlanta right now? Not, you know, sort of the, a long history of if you were born here, but what, what is keeping you in Atlanta and making you decide to, to have your film career here in this moment? Rob, you want to start us off? <laughs> uh, I've been here six years now in February. Uh, I moved up here because I was in Orlando and the incentive program down there was failing at right about the same time that I was on an uptick in Atlanta. And in the acting world, it's extremely competitive, as you probably all know. And at the time that I moved up here, it wasn't saturated yet with actors, so there was way more opportunity to get into the game. Um, and that's really what, what brought me here. And I stay here because each year passes, more, more shows come to shoot here, more films come to shoot here, thus providing more opportunity for me to, uh, to audition. And, and to get on shows. And it's not only, it, it's also the caliber of projects that are here as well. You know, we have some of the most popular television shows in the country are shooting here. And having those types of credits on your resume help you continue to level up in the business, so. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Lance Kral. Um, part, of, I know you don't want us to tell the whole history, but part of why I'm here is because of my history here. So back in the uh, 1990s, I started a theater company called The Whole World Theater uh, with a handful of dumb improv actors. And um, we, we had a great time and we really, uh, between us and uh, another theater company, competing improv company called Dad's Garage Theater, we really helped start the whole comedy movement here in Atlanta. Um, and then I went to LA to become an actor, which then eventually became a producer and a director and a writer um, in 2000. And uh, in the course of being in LA and being part of that system and pitching to different networks and working with different producers, I started to see this need for content and ideas that came outside from outside of the bubble of LA and New York. And unfortunately, the only people that really have that access to pitch an idea to a network executive is someone that has been in the system for as long as I was. That And once you're in the system, you never leave because you're like, it takes you a long time to get to a place where you have the access to be able to pitch a show. So there was this sort of perpetual, you know, motion machine happening where just everything that you see being pitched and being, you know, put on TV all comes from the same voice, all comes from the same region of the country. Um, and so I saw an opportunity to come back here 
um, because I'm I have roots artistic roots here in Atlanta and because um, I went to high school here and college here um, I have you know family roots here and I thought you know this would be maybe a great opportunity to sort of live in two worlds live in you know use the experience and the connections that I've made in my time in Hollywood but also come back here to Atlanta and find writers playwrights directors voices stories real people that just are fascinating and interesting and and use those ideas and package them with people that I've worked with in LA um, and so we started a company called Pitcher It Productions and we have sold uh, we've We've sold six shows since uh, since we started in June of 2016. Some of them I could talk about, some of them I can't, but we've sold hour-long dramas to ABC, to CBS, to Fox. Uh, we just recently uh, were in a bidding war with this fine lady's uh, show that she developed uh, and pitched to me between Showtime, Hulu, and, and, um, and Freeform. Um, so it's a real, it's a, it's a, it's an exciting time, but it, it really speaks to the amount of talent that is here in Atlanta that just isn't being um, utilized, and where we're just scratching the surface. I mean, there's just so many stories and so many creatives out here that that have never really had an opportunity to, um, you know, to take their ideas anywhere other than you know just making stuff to show their mom and dad so um it's really exciting and that's the super long-winded version of why i'm here hello good evening <laughs> thank you for making it out in the rain right um i am from philadelphia originally and came down here to go to spelman college and i've been an actor my whole life of 10 years old once back that's always what i wanted to do got all into math and science, so I was going to be an engineer. Anyway, so I got to college and was all into engineering and everything and got back into acting because the engineering thing was not great for the transcripts. Anyway, so I, um, I kind of was confused by the time I graduated. I knew I wanted to act, but I was a little confused. So I was in the corporate industry, you know, waiting tables. I got into hotel industry and then just really wanted to get back into acting. And so I started taking improv at Whole World Theater. Uh, and so by the time I kind of got to Whole World was when Lance was starting the, the LA trajectory. And um, so we kind of knew each other, but he was one of the, you know, OGs and was leaving, and I was just kind of... That was kind of in. a big deal. He was. He, he had a show. He was on Average Joe. I don't know if you all remember that. Anyway, okay, this is a hard audience here. Right? <laughs> you know, right? But um, so I was started going out to L.A. because at the time, there just was nothing here. So anybody who really wanted to make this a career, you had to leave. You had to go to L.A. You had to go to New York. Um, there just was no path to being on television. Um, and you could even say maybe um, when sh the late 90s hit, Everybody just kept saying, oh, it's coming, it's coming. We're like, yeah, whatever, I got bills today. Um, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And so I was going out to LA, I was like, I'm moving, I made all these connections, had it all perfect. And then I found out we were gonna have a baby. So I stayed, and so like many moms, we had to put the career on hold for the kid for a little bit, and um, it took a while while this, while it started kind of growing here. It wasn't really enough to really do anything. So I was just kind of stuck. But then things started clicking. And then it started clicking. And I got to start booking projects that I never would have been able to book if I were in LA. I would have been a little peon in LA, but here, you know, got a little bit of sauce. So at this time, this is when, you know, I'm booking more things. It's, it's I guess, you know, four years ago. Things are going great. I really start working on my writing some more. And then I guess, I don't know, when you came back and, you know, started doing um, more developing of my projects. And that's kind of where I am now, where it's the acting stuff is taking off. And now I get to be here and be a part of building everything, you know, not just being just the actor that's hired at the last minute, but the person that gets to create, the person that has the vision. And um, that's an amazing thing that I wasn't sure I'd be able to do here. But now we can. So that's my story. 
Thanks. Um, I'm Lee Thomas, and I was born here. Uh, so I, I lived here, went to UGA, undergraduate, uh, went to Georgia State after that in film as well, then went to NYU after that, um, and I miss, miss being in Georgia. So I came back right before the Olympics in uh, 1996. And at the time, it was just too risky to work freelance. Uh, you know, there was just not enough shows. And I, um, I, I, I wanted to work in film, so I started at the film office. And that was literally about the time when it started tanking everything. <laughs> when she said the late 1990s, I mean, that's when Canada put in place uh, tax incentives and we started losing our business. And, uh, you know, we saw a lot of our vendors close down, uh, close their doors. Panavision closed in 1998. Um, people were moving to other markets or, or finding other lines of work. And then Louisiana passed an aggressive incentive in 2003, and we lost the Ray Charles story, and Ray Charles was a Georgia native. So that was really kind of a, a wake-up call for our legislature. So um, we kind of clunked along for a few years, and then um, everything picked up after our great incentive that was passed in 2008. So I, I can't imagine, you know, wanting to go to another market now. We we have uh, like Netflix is doing a, a job fair here. They want to they want us to you know f identify our best and brightest so that they can go out to L.A. and work. But you know nobody wants to go now. I mean it's like you're in the best place in the world to be here to go out there and start over again in L.A. would be ludicrous. So. So I don't know who all read this, but there was something in the uh, the Sunday New York Times about. LA and the film industry and the, the combination of both the, uh, the Me Too movement and, and fallout from that and then uh, business structures changing, there are these huge companies merging with each other kind of right and left where there's a lot of corporate restructuring and then just a sense of staleness in Hollywood. And so I don't know, from, from y'all's perspective, um, and not that not that I think Atlanta wants or needs to be a you know a new Hollywood. I think we we all agree that we want to do our own thing. But do you all see a sort of specific moment of opportunity for Atlanta, given given what's going on in those other places? I'll speak to that. Um, yeah, I, I I do absolutely. Um, there's a. You know, there's a tipping point right now. I and this is just my opinion, but um, I feel that Hollywood is, you know, it's like that snake that's eating its own tail, and it's like all the people that, you know, it, it put up on a pedestal and and you know said, oh, you know, you're the tastemaker, or all of a sudden become like the you know the enemy, and you know all these big great actors that were looked up to and could boss people around or are, are now like, oh, I can't believe, uh, you know, his activity that he's been doing this whole time. And, you know, everyone has this sort of guilty feeling like they all knew that that's how it was going anyway. There was this, you know, there, there's, if no one, no one's being totally intellectually honest if, if they don't admit that, like, it's just, it was common knowledge that this bad behavior was happening. And so because it's, everyone is trying to figure out, you know, what's right, what's wrong, what's up and what's down right now. And all these companies are coming in and buying and merging. And, and it's so unstable that when this Atlanta company comes, for us at least, this Atlanta company comes into the picture and says, hey, we're pitching this idea from this fresh new place called Atlanta that... Um, that isn't part of your yucky system here. It's almost like it's a breath of fresh air that's coming into their in, in, into their studios. Um, it's a we're flyover country, right? Like that's the thing you always hear is like uh, yeah. if it's and it's the perspective in L.A. and New York is like yeah. literally if it's not L.A. or New York, it's the sticks. Oh yeah, no. I when when we first started our company, I went to and I won't say who, but I went to a. Um, a network uh, ahead of a big network to tell them, you know, we went to all the networks. And this particular executive I was very friendly with, and I'd sold a couple shows to, and she said, okay, now you know it's a she. Um, she, I told her I'm moving to Atlanta to start this company. She's like, oh, what's it like living with the normals? And I was like, wow, well, they are normal. And that's, a, that's actually a good thing. Being normal is, you know, and being polite and having a life outside of, you know, having to 
you know, conversations with the neighbors that aren't about like, what did you book um, is actually really refreshing. But she was like, well, there can't be any good writers out there because if they were any good, they'd be in L.A. I mean, that's just how they see. So it's a it's a perception that we are slowly changing, but we are changing. I mean, every time we sell a show, they're like, what's this whole Atlanta thing? You know, what's going on with Atlanta? How are we, you know, we've pitched six shows, we've sold six shows. How is that possible? Um, but but to back to your point, I, I think because Hollywood is in such a sort of self-reflective crisis mode right now, it, it really does open the doors and, and they want something fresh and new and untarnished to come into you know their lives. And I, I think that's a really great opportunity for, for a company like ourselves, for young creatives that are coming from outside the system. They want, they call it fresh voices, but really what they mean is voices that just aren't part of this, you know, cesspool that is Hollywood. And I know a lot of times when I, when I talk to people on set, if it's like a, a big star or if it's somebody who, you know, I always ask them, well, how do you like Atlanta? How are you enjoying it? What, I really like it, it's hot. But you know, it's always, it's hot, but you know, I really, really like it. And I think, um, it's, it's definitely a part of we are not corrupted. We can't be corrupted. The worst, I mean, the best project you could get 10 years ago was like a, you know, a human resources video. So, you know, you can't really, you're not going to sign away your morals for that, you know, a cashier training video, right? You know, so um, we do not have that in depth corrupted for, you know, generationally. Um, what I always tell people, people can come here and be a complete person. You know, you go to L.A., everyone's an actor, everyone's got a treatment, everyone, you know, it's the, the trash collector, it's the girl at the, you know, the counter, it's every single person, your, your mail carrier, everyone, well, I'm, I'm taking this class, I'm in a workshop, you know, whereas I don't even tell people I'm an actor when I go out to L.A., but here, it's like, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm on the PTA, I, you know, I do other things that, you know, and other people are like, wow, I saw you on TV, and it's like a, a cool thing, but I'm still like, okay, kid, I'm helping out on field day. Like, it's just, you get to be normal here, you get to be a complete person, you get to have a regular house and go to the grocery store, and you don't have to deal with all that stuff in LA, LA's fun. But, you know, it's we can define our own lifestyle here, whereas, you know, everything is just so set in L.A. already. And I, I would say, too, a huge thing that I noticed when I when I came back here that I found so refreshing. It wasn't just in acting. It wasn't just in theater or, or the TV or film, but just the arts in general in Atlanta is there's um there's something I, I, I notice is like either process driven or product driven art. And in LA, everything's product driven, meaning that you don't do a one act play unless you're trying to get an agent. You don't join the groundlings unless you're trying to get on Saturday Night Live. You don't do anything unless there's the end result. It, it, you know, there's a plan for why I'm doing this. In Atlanta, people just make stuff to make it. They want I'm making this art piece to make this art piece. I'm doing this one act because I want to enjoy the process of doing this one act play. I'm writing this script. I don't, there's no, I have no way of selling it. I'm just writing it because I really enjoy the process of writing. And that's how you become a good artist. That's how you become a good writer. That's how you become good at anything is you make stuff to make it and you don't worry about failing. Failing is not the end of your career. It's, learning something and going, okay, I failed from that and I'll learn from this and I'll become better. But no one gives themselves the opportunity to fail in LA because if you fail, then you're a failure and it's way too expensive and you got to move. Here in Atlanta, you can make stuff and learn and everyone has this really unique voice and everyone has their own tone and it's really refreshing just as a producer seeing, meeting people and like, I have not met the same version of, of another person since I've been here. We've met 1500 plus people and they're all super unique and they have a different voice and they're coming to us with totally different ideas. And it's wonderful. I mean, it's really, it, it's a testament to the state. So Lee, what's the, the state perspective on, on the kind of growth opportunities that I guess you're focused on or, or areas that you want to begin focusing on? Uh, well, 
I mean, certainly, you know, just the, the disruption that's happened in, in Hollywood, uh, we talked about a little bit, uh, uh, with all the new platforms. I mean, we used to wait for the calls from CBS or ABC or NBC, and now we have, you know, we're in a place where Netflix has, you know, uh, bought out three of our soundstage campuses. So that's, that's different. Uh, with all the new platforms, there's a lot going on, and, and content is king, and we see, uh, you know, that everybody is looking for more because it's kind of an eat or be eaten world out there as far as the, um, the studios go. Um, but, you know, the things that we, we need more of, uh, you know, we need special effects houses, we need more post-production, and, and I think all of that is coming. I mean, we've grown tremendously fast for the time that we've been in, in a decade to have, you know, um, 13 new sound stages. I mean, we went from 45,000 square feet of sound stages uh, before this incentive to 1.1 million of purpose-built and 1.2 of retrofitted soundstage space. I mean, nobody sees that kind of um, infrastructure growth. So, um, you know, I think it's more the same. Make sure that we uh, can stay, uh, you know, with our, our workforce. Make sure people are trained through, you know, Georgia Film Academy or any of the other campuses that are doing uh, training. Um, obviously, we, you know, we've got to stay a welcoming place to do business, as we were just named for the sixth time in a row, that's got to stay in order to keep this business here. So. so kind of forecasting out, whether it's, you know, five years, 10 years, what what's in, I, I hope that it differs for each of you a little bit, but what's your kind of idealized vision of what Atlanta could become? And especially, I think we, you know, we, it's great to have the huge productions, but what beyond that, you know, what are sort of the, the original things that are kind of start to finish here? Do we, what's that infrastructure look like? And Rob, let's start with you. Uh, something we were actually just talking about is to get uh, an amendment to the incentive program to be more friendly to writer's rooms coming out here. Um, I think if you had, just as an actor, I've seen over the last six years, Countless actors from LA have now transplanted here, and New York, and New, you know, New Orleans. I run a taping service, and we see we see great actors from other markets moving here on a regular basis because that's where the work is. Now, with all these new actors in town, they're raising the talent level. You know, LA has had a structure of education for about a hundred years. You know, so has New York. That that education is valuable you know having access to that is valuable and, and these people that are coming out here are bringing that to us so those tools are now made available raising all of the acting skills of, of you know people in town um that would be the same if you were able to get more writers out here just having them be here they would be doing things on the side you know bringing other people underneath them um, i've seen casts and crew on weekends just band together and shoot a passion project. So having some A-list actor in town working on a film, he then, or she has a project that they've wanted to, to work, they go on a Saturday and Sunday and everybody shoots this thing for free. But without having them here, that, that isn't, you know, so I'd like to see that. Um, from an actor's standpoint in a couple of years, I would like actors to be given their, their chance. And what I mean by that is that still jobs are being booked out of the major markets, New York and L.A. So a lot of the smaller roles, uh, co-star roles, which are your policemen, your mailmen, whatever, you, you know, anything like a, a couple lines that moves the story along, that's what a lot of Atlanta actors are getting, which is, which is great. You know, you're, you're doing it, you're on TV. But no one, gets, no one gets into this to deliver the coffee, you know. That's not... That's not why we're here. To, we, to deliver the pretend coffee. Yeah, yeah. there's not never, to, yeah, the pretend <laughs> coffee. And we all have, we have this thirst to tell the story and move the story and be a part of it. That's why we are actors. And, you know, over the last six years, I've seen our opportunities have increased. You know, beforehand, we weren't even being seen for, for certain things. I mean, you've been here way longer than me. And, and I've been, and I met Karen a couple years ago, and I've been following her, and the opportunities that she's gotten is is outright is incredible and that gives me hope because that means all right great now if she's getting it cool that means that they're 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 seeing more people now i'm gonna have more of an opportunity 
And it's important for us to continue leveling up because if I start getting, if I reach a certain level in my acting career, I'm not going to audition for these smaller roles. And those are going to become available for actors in town that need to bolster their resume. Same thing with, you know, Karen's not going to audition for something small. But then that puts us in this greater pool. And I would like to see us be able to be reading for a series of regulars at a hot, booking them, not reading them. Having all the jobs. If this show is shot here in Atlanta, I want all the actors to be Atlanta local actors. That's, that's what I really would like to say. And that's that. Yeah, I, I definitely have to piggyback on that because I think it, it's the overall mentality of L.A. and them thinking that, you know, we're just a bunch of hillbillies here that don't do anything. We can't, you know what I mean? We can't do anything. We're just happy to have you. It's like, no, we're trained artists here who've been working on our craft who choose not to live in Los Angeles. Um, and that is going to have to change the more we do start booking and um, and start proving ourselves. I mean, we'll get on set and they'll be like, oh, my God, you guys were great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, so um, that is definitely, that definitely has to happen where the perception is you come here, you're going to get trained people who are, are professionals. The other thing, I do not like being called Hollywood of the South. Like, I hate that because I don't. I, I think that we're Atlanta. We just do things differently. Um, is that worse than Yollywood? Um, no, I think Yollywood probably is the worst. Yes. 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 Will, yeah. Yes. But it's, I don't feel like you, you serve yourself well to define yourself in the shadow of someone else. So I, that is one thing. I just don't want it, us to be constantly compared to, you know, Hollywood Jr. <laughs> you, know, you know, Hollywood in the making. No, we don't want to be Hollywood. Yeah, I don't think if we go out with the intention to be Hollywood, we're not going to. It's not an attainable, in my opinion, I don't think it's an attainable goal. We should just try to be Atlanta and continue building what we've been able to do. Because, like you said, we've had miraculous growth in the last decade. You know, so if we can just continue on that path, that's that's okay. Like that, that's awesome. I think we just really, really need to to focus on the things that do that I love working here um, is we're more collaborative. We look out for each other. I mean, when we do get the opportunity to still go out on auditions and everything, I mean, you know, we'll leave our script for somebody. Hey, you left your script or, or you know, our agents hate when we do this. I, I don't do this, <laughs> but I've heard other a other actors will call their friends and be like, I didn't see you on the list. Did you audition for this? And I mean, we're calling our friends to tell them. I mean, other actors are calling their friends to tell them about auditions that could be in competition. They're not doing that in L.A. They're trying to get you out the audition. We're trying to share because we feel that, you know, it's not about the, the slice of pie getting smaller. It's about increasing the pie, you know, and that's what we want to do. Yeah, Atlanta, something that's, that's just core to the identity of Atlanta is the the full diversity of the city and that's diversity in in every way and you know you see Hollywood where there's this real struggle of how do we figure out how to do this diversity thing is kind of what you see going on there and it's so forced it's yeah. so forced and here it's it's both that you know in in terms of gender in terms of race in terms of uh family background in terms of socio political perspectives status, political perspectives but then also creative diversity atlanta has so many people like lance said earlier doing you know incredible weird random things and you know i i shot a music video for a hip-hop group that came together because i knew that one of the top drone pilots in the world is here and I hired a stunt woman and had the drone pilot chase her with the drone and then put it to a music video. And it was like, we, you know, we just got together and did it. But that's, Atlanta is the kind of place where in a couple of days you, you can do that. And that just doesn't happen anywhere else, I don't think. I, I would say where I would like things to go just from a um, you know, development stand is I would like for Atlanta to be known as a place for not just you know, cheap production, but also a place where ideas are born, um, where creatives, you know, there, it would be great to, there's no infrastructure for what we're doing right now. Like in, a, in LA, there's agencies and managers who, who work with their talent and they serve as a filter and, you know, you call them and they're like, here's my best five writers. We're, we're reading everything, which is a lot. It's a lot to read. 
um, and we're and we're taking meetings with everyone, which is great. But it would be great if the agencies would start to learn really what it's like to be a lit agent. If there were some managers that came out here that gave, there just basically needs to be more education. Education in the the actual process of developing television. I, there's a lot of there's a lot of writers. You go to these conferences and they're like, we deserve writers' rooms, and you're like, no, you don't, because you're not ready yet. You're just not. People need to rise to the occasion, just like you said with the actors. Like the actors are starting to become better because the competition's here, and they're starting to get better and better and better organically. The writing, the writing community here doesn't. They're not being forced into competition with each other because there's nothing to really compete for. There's no, there, there. You know, there's no writers' jobs to to be had out here. So we are training people one person at a time, learning story structure and learning how to write an outline. And, and all of these things are we love to do, but we need to do that for the state in a much bigger, you know, um, more uh, efficient way. Um, so development, I would love to see some invent incentives from the government that support development, that support investment into development, because really that's the foundation. I mean, that. That's the thing that, like, if if there's no tax incentives in LA for production development, is still I could still come up with a great idea from any one of you and pitch that to LA, and they don't care if there's tax incentives or not. I mean, that is, you know, that's a way to really like root yourself into television and film is if we really like make development a robust uh, thing here in Atlanta. Uh, so that's what I like to see. So just a little. Oh, go ahead, Lee. I, w I will say that um, writers' rooms are included in our tax incentive. Yes, um, and Will Packer is doing a writers' room here now. So, let what a good know. deal! Woohoo! Yep. Yep. Um, so, just a, a little bit of context for the people here who might not know. So, the the Hollywood of the South term and kind of where that comes from is this idea. So, there's all this production. So, what that means is ideas for you know shooting Avengers four come from LA. They, they come here, they, they film the movie here, and then everything leaves and goes back to L.A. And really, the bulk of the money, I mean, the vast bulk of those billions of dollars that come in, that's going to L.A. And, and there's another analogy that sometimes people... How do people, you see that? Why do you see, say that? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to say the amount of money that's spent on Avengers 4 and the amount of money that it makes, if you look at the amount of money that goes into production... And just yeah. in general for these huge budget things, granted, it's a huge economic impact, but if the if start to finish everything is here, it's like that money never leaves. Oh sure. If you could have it all, yeah. Yeah. But if you could only I, have I, I'm that, saying I'm saying this is good. So I just awesome. I just want people to food, understand right. where where that yeah. that we want to do more than just be a production hub. Yeah, it's a labor-intensive business, though, and when a, a Avengers is here or something, that's about 800 jobs, sure. uh, right? Yeah, there. it's so, a it's a huge. I mean, massive economic yeah. impact, massive labor impact. Sure. Everyone in the film industry is thrilled that all of these things are here, um, but what we're looking for are how can we own our own ideas here? Right. And and one thing that I'm curious about is in terms of almost the the narrative of Atlanta within the film industry, what do you think it takes to, what, what's sort of the thing that has to happen to be that victory that's like, oh, Atlanta now is more than just a production hub? You know, you gotta get your at-bats. You have to just, it, there's no easy solution. There's no, you can't throw money at the problem. You just have to sell a lot of shows from Atlanta, get the press and word of mouth and, you know, get the networks have to see the fact that like oh wow you know like it doesn't have to be just picture it but for right now it's picture it wow picture it's come in and pitch four ideas to us in the past three weeks and they we you know we were we we went in the room with Lawrence Fishburne we went in the room with Jerry Bruckheimer we went in the room with uh you know Sony executives and then all these you know big players are developing these shows and pitching these shows out of Atlanta. This was totally new to them this year. And they were just like, what, what is this? What's this Atlanta thing all about? And now we're starting to sell these shows and the shows are now getting, you know, these big articles in deadline Hollywood and variety and Hollywood reporter. 
And they're like, oh, Atlanta-based idea. And so, like, all of a sudden, you know, it's just the more successes we have and the more, you know, victory laps we can take that, you know, the show sold to Hollywood, yes, but it was developed here in Atlanta, the more you change that perception. I mean, you just you just have to put in the work. Everyone's like, you know, what's the what's the easy – there's no easy – there's no easy solution. I wish there was. If there is, please tell me. Um, but really, it's just, you know, do the work – you know, you're going to get a, a bunch of no's and you just got to keep going. And that's, you know, sweat, sweat, sweat. I think a lot of it is once we see more people who own homes here, more people who live here, most people who are raising their kids here. Um, you know, but we can kind of liken it to the music industry, how, you know, the music industry became an Atlanta thing and it wasn't before, you know, LaFace and, and uh, you know, um, why am I forgetting Jermaine Dupree? <laughs> you know, but, you know, there was that point where, you know, Outkast was like, the South got something to say. And it, up until that point, people weren't really acknowledging Atlanta. Oh, it's just a couple of artists here and there, you know. And then it kind of became a movement. And then Atlanta became the place, you know, if you were a rapper, you had to come through Atlanta. Whereas before, you know, you had to go through New York, you, you know. And I think we just have to follow that. I mean, it just takes time. I mean, the fact yeah. that we've grown this much yeah. in this it's amount a, of time. It is. It's the critical mass thing of having, you know, enough people. And we see showrunners moving here. We see, you know, line producers moving here. Um, and, you know, everybody wants to be Will Packer, but it's a lot of work to be Will Packer. And he came up, you know, $50,000 movie, $200,000 movie, $2 million movie, $4 million movie. Now he's, you know, one of the top producers out there. And, and to have, you know, if we had 20 Will Packers, we wouldn't need anybody else. It'd be done. Well, until then. It'd be really we'll boring, though. A bunch of Will Packers <laughs> running around. He's cool. <laughs> he's cool. You know, he's awesome. Uh, so what <laughs> what is something going on in film? One thing for each of you within film in Atlanta that you're really excited about right now. It can be something big. It can be something small. It can be a, you know, a, a big issue thing or uh, even a specific project. Um, yeah. What... Uh, What's got you fired up? I'm in fired up, but I, I feel, feel like I'm talking too much. So, <laughs> um, well, we we just had this banner year. Um, we partnered with Jerry Bruckheimer and we sold the show to CBS based on um, the Uniform Services University, which is in Bethesda, Maryland. But it was the idea was brought to us by an Atlanta uh, writer who has pitched to us. Um, uh, maybe 20 times since we've been, uh, you know, in Atlanta, and we've said, great idea, but not right for us, great idea, but not right for us, and he just keeps coming and coming and coming, and he finally brought us this, this great world that his son-in-law went to the school, and I was like, what is this place? And it's a military university where you get a free degree, basically they pay you to go to college, and the only you know catch is you have a six year military commitment afterwards, but then you have a you know you're a doctor, and you, your residency is at Walter Reed Medical Hospital, which is like where they you know it's where the president gets sick, he goes there. If the Supreme Court gets sick, they go there. Um, and it's this world that we're like I've never heard of that in television. So we partnered with Jerry Bruckheimer and we sold it to CBS. Um, Excited about Karen's show that we can't really talk too much about right now, other than it's centered around a true life story of the daughter of the um, only female to ever lead the Black Panther Party and her life being raised in the Black Panther Party. It's a show that we recently sold. Um, Van has a show. <laughs> Everyone has a show. I do. Oh Van, Van, ha, Van is a very you're, you're, that's accomplished. That's a very Oprah moment. Like, and you have a show. Yeah, and you have a show. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone gets a car. Can I have a show? Um, but Van. Sorry, sorry Rob. <laughs> soon, soon. Van, Van is a very accomplished comic book writer, and he came to us, and and, uh, and we developed a show sort of like Silicon Valley, but meets the comic book industry. And that we just got that set up at Sony, which is going to be pitching very soon. We sold a show to ABC recently um, uh, with the head writer of Grey's Anatomy is writing the show for us. Um, and it's centered around a female private detective that lives here in the South. 
and um, her husband's a cop, her daughters are cops. She works for a defense attorney. This is the true story part. She works for a defense attorney who hires her to help exonerate the clients that her husband and daughters put away. And yet they're a loving family and they're, she's super Republican and the, her defense attorney is super Democrat and yet they actually get along. That's a novel thing. Um, <laughs> And so that's the other thing I was going to say. That's one thing that's super cool about Atlanta. I don't know if we got a bunch of libs in here or a bunch of Republicans. I don't know. But, but it, it truly is a state where I, it's just nice for me to have a conversation with someone without it devolving into just, you're stupid, shut up, you don't agree with me. People actually can have differences here and talk about them and still be civil. And I saw two signs from neighbors. One said Stacey Abrams and the other one said, who's the other guy? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I was like... Who's the lib now? Yeah. <laughs> and, and there was no... The cars were not keyed. It was, everything was fine. I mean, that doesn't exist in Hollywood. It just doesn't. Um, unless you're left of Lenin, you're, you're the enemy. And so um, it's nice. It's nice to, to realize that there's people with other opinions, and I want to put that on television. I want there to be I want there to be other points of view that are not ridiculed, um, because we need to come together, don't we, people? Right? I mean, come on. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm excited about. Like, I'm like, I want to know from Lee what's coming up. Right? Like, yeah, I mean, you know, Lee we, knows everything. Yeah, we got a lot of great companies. That I mean, we got companies expanding, but we also have some amazing uh, visual effects houses that are looking to be in Georgia. I think everybody kind of wanted to make you know make sure that the the next governor would be on board uh, with the tax incentives and that the growth would continue. So everybody was kind of holding holding their powder until all of that happened. But yeah, some ama amazing shows. I mean, David Fincher will be here with War World Z2, which is awesome. And uh, Jordan Peele will be shooting uh, Lovecraft Country for HBO, which will be amazing. So lots of, yeah, lots of really exciting shows. And you know, just it's, it's exciting to see the success of the shows. We've, I mean, shows like Ozark and, and Stranger Things and Walking Dead and everything else that have just, have become, you know, just, you know, identities of their own. And every time a director or actor or writer that I know comes here for the first time, they call me and they're like, oh my God, Atlanta's amazing. I know. Everyone's so the nice. Food. That yeah. belt line thing where just people are walking. Right. <laughs> I was like, and yes, people food. walk. They like the food. <laughs> um, but yeah, Atlanta, Atlanta is, I've, I've never gotten a bad Yelp review from Atlanta. No, yeah. yeah. I it's mean, all we have just to do is shoot here one time and they'll be back. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's an Absolutely. easy resell for sure. Roberto, are you going? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how to follow that all up. I'm excited that um, DC decided to bring a bunch of their shows to Atlanta. Um, I think I just, I like job opportunity for actors and the fact that DC is, is launching several shows for their streaming platform uh, in 2019 and they decided to bring them all here is, is pretty spectacular. Um, and to touch on the, the, what I said earlier about actors getting opportunities, uh, we recently had Josh Michael book a series regular role on a Showtime pilot. We had two actors book show, um, series regular contracts on one of the DC shows. So it's nice to see people that I know that I like, I respect, and and call my friends to to finally get to the tip of that mountain and 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 <laughs> and work regularly. You know, it, it, that, that's it. I mean. I was excited when I heard World War Z, um, having David Fincher be in town and, and, yeah. and doing a project of that magnitude here. I mean, that was a $250 million budget film, World War Z won. So the fact that they decided to come here is, you know, is, is great for us. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I definitely, um, of course, I'm, I'm excited about the project with Lance and everything. That was great. And that was, you know, came from college, a friend from college. And... Um, you know, the type of projects that we get to audition for now and just looking to see what's coming through. And there really is an excitement, you know, yeah, I want to book it, but if I see my girl book the part, 
you know, I'm excited for her. Yeah, I wanted to book it. But I'm really, you know, it's great to really look on things and be like, oh, jo-. I mean, I still react like I'm not in the industry. I'm like, oh, so it's all got that. So it's great to see people that we've been in the trenches together since the 90s, you know, since the early 2000s, and all of us that kind of stuck it out here when there was nothing and to see everyone kind of having moments now. And so now it's just to see the parts grow, the opportunities grow, you know. I mean, I I have to say, you know, at the end of the year when I redo the resume and everything, and I'm like, I remember when like, you know, One Tree Hill was the best thing on my resume and I was excited about that. Mm -hmm. And you know, and and looking back and, um, and also, you know, just looking at the stuff that I didn't book, Sometimes, you know, there was this awesome part in Boy Erased. I'm like, I almost booked that. Like, it's sometimes you weren't even in the room to to even be in the, the, the place to get good parts. So just to, to be kind of close is amazing. And, you know, 2019. <laughs> so as we wrap up, um, I think we have a lot of people who, who came who are um, obviously interested in film, but also you know, there can be this this kind of sense of a divide between people who are not in film and it can seem very impenetrable or insurmountable. And I think for people who are interested in, you know, whatever their their career track is in engaging with film in some way, whether it's, you know, you could work in finance or work in law, I think that there are ways to, to plug into film. So do you all have any advice for people who are just sort of generally interested in how how can kind of the broader business community engage with the world of film, uh, what that would look like, what you would suggest. I'm going to give them a second to think about that and add something to my last answer, if that's possible. (laughs) We'll we'll allow it. Cool. Uh, Something else that's really exciting to me is the black box theater scene over the last several years has really taken a phenomenal step forward. Um, There's so many actors here that aren't getting the jobs that they like to get, so then they're going to create other content just to do it. They're doing it for fun. And each year, more and more of our studios and like our acting training facilities are opening a black box theater. And they're putting on great stuff. So if you're not seeing it, please do go to the Robert Mello studio. Go to, you know, go check out <laughs> Drama Inc. has just opened up their studio. Um, Seven Stages has been super friendly to, to houses in town. So go check it out. You're, you're really missing out if you're, if you're not seeing it. Now we're going to the next question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, um, certainly if you want to get in production, the Georgia Film Academy is a, way, a great way to go. Um, it's for people of all ages, you can either go through the university system, the technical college system, or continuing ed. Um, you can also enter that way. Um, you know, it's a sh- it's short cur- coursework, and then you can, um, at, th- at the end, you can intern on one of the shows, and you can be paid by The Walking Dead, or um, Stranger Things, or Ozark, or, you know, one of the Marvel shows. So that's, that's, this is like the quickest way to get in there um, and, you know, start your career. Um, if you want to buy tax credits, that's one way. Uh, you know, that's how our program works, is most of the shows that come here, they don't have income tax liability, so they... Um, get uh, transferable tax credits. So if you want to lower your income tax liability, you can buy tax credits um, on our website at georgia.org. If you have a property you want to list, either to be a location for films or if you want to rent out your home to an actor or uh, a production person, you can put that on our website. It's just, uh, if you put in Georgia, just uh, film submit my property, you can upload your information there. So that's another way. We have opportunities all the, lo- all the time. If you want to be an ed- extra and you want to kind of go see the whole process and how it works, opportunities all the time, all day, every day, we're getting uh, requests for, for actors um, and extras that way. So there's a lot of ways to get involved. Free food. If you're an extra. Free food, yes. Uh, long part. hours. Okay. I say, and this is what my grandmother told my mother, what my mother told me, join an organization or two. Um, organizations are the best way to get involved with people who are have similar goals. Um, there's always some type of workshops or trainings, access panels. Um, and get to work though. A lot of times people join organizations and they just kind of do whatever. You know, if you're starting off, you know, be that person that's at the check-in desk every day. Everything, every every function, I'm checking people in. Hey, how are you 
you doing? You got a name tag on. People are like, oh, I don't know. But that, that girl, she's always there. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, join an organization. That's that's really how I worked my way up and how I kept myself occupied when there was no work. I, I worked a lot with women in film and television. It was just women in film back in the 90s. I served on the board. I was programs director. And the, this way I got to put together programs. So the things that I wanted to go to, I now put it together. I was the one who got to call these people cold. And it's not, hey, me, 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 I'm an actor. Please hire me. Please hire me. It's, hello, I'm putting together a workshop for an organization. Would you be interested in being a part of this? Oh, yeah, sure. You know, before I booked, I used to be with Houghton um, Talent for years and years as an, um, they were my agency. And before, you know, when I first got picked up, the only way she knew my name was I always saw your name on the flyers. You know, so that is a way, you know, there's um, Atlanta Film Video. I say Atlanta Film Video, I went way back, right? <laughs> you know, uh, the Atlanta Film Festival here, they always need volunteers. Bronze Lens Film Festival, they always need volunteers. Be a volunteer, be a person of service. This is an industry where people are always trying to take something from you. Be that person that's here to give, that's here to solve problems. And that is how you make a name for yourself. You know, that's how you do it. As far as... Um if you want to be involved in television development, there's, there is no wall stopping you other than if you don't have an internet connection, you can submit ideas to our company uh, through our website portal, pitcherproductions.com, and there's a submission site there, and we, we take any submission. We'll read through it. We don't necessarily always get back to you because there's a lot, but um, if you want to be a writer, you know, and if that's something you want to do, write. It's one of those really easy things to, you know, writers just write. They just start writing journals. That's my motto is writing is really easy. That's what I always make sure to tell people. Thanks, Lance. <laughs> I, didn't say, I didn't say being a good writer is easy. I'm just saying like writing is easy. Right. But like, yeah, everyone's like, how do I start Facebook writing? Counts, right? right. Do you like to write? I don't and really like we're write. done. But there's a Turn lot of like mic. there's a lot of groups here, a lot of uh, screenwriting groups that get together and read each other's stuff and give each other critiques, and you gotta take the critiques as with as long with the you know the praise. Um, yeah, like Karen said, but just on a you know on a creative level, just get yourself involved in whatever it is that you want to do. I mean, there's there's so many process driven groups out here that just like to make stuff just to make it get involved in that if you're someone who wants to you know be a part of you know investment wise you can invest in some of these companies uh that that are are you know doing certain things and you can you can be involved that way um yeah there's a whole list of ways you can be involved rob i i feel like they named all the ways I was going to say the Atlanta Film Festival is a great place to get started. They always need volunteers, and we're one of the oldest festivals in the country. So I think that would be a great way uh, in regards to acting. Train, take lots of classes, and then take more classes. And don't stay at the same place. And train at every studio in the city. Yeah, don't, don't stay with one teacher. Uh, continue to diversify your resume. Um, be willing to drop everything. And, and be wherever you need to be. You know, if, if your agent says you need to be in New Orleans tomorrow at 5 o'clock, you're in New Orleans tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Same thing with D.C., you know, sh whatever, Charlotte. It doesn't matter. Be available and, and drop everything. Um, that would be my best advice. Uh, I really feel like you guys hit up the nail on the head there. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Craigslist? <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't go to Craigslist. I, I have one thing to say, though, that I don't really know how it's connected, but it's important. But technology, like, you really got to be on your tech game now to be competitive. Um, you know, there's been a big uh, shift just with the digital era. It's really shifted. And it has put a lot of onus on talent to really be able to submit quality, you know, auditions, quality, uh, you know, electronic press kits, <laughs> quality, you know, whatever. You have to have things that look quality. You have to have um, some type of, of uh, presence online. You have to have these things, and you can't be that person. I'm not into that. Well, then you're not into this. So get yourself <laughs> up <laughs> technically and um, be aware of things. There's no reason not to know 
anything anymore. If you get an opportunity, there's always some information online. Read up, research it. I had an audition for something. I watched both episodes before I auditioned. You know what I mean? You, you, you've got to be aware of what's going on constantly because there's 10,000 other people that know way more than you and they're going to be that much more prepared for the same thing that you want. Well, I think that's a great note to end on, that piece of advice. Thank you again to our panelists for being here and for imparting so much wisdom. Thank you. And, and thank you to all of you for, for braving the weather and, and coming out. We, we were graced with a, a, a really great, hot Atlanta day <laughs> for, for this. Um, and thank you again to, to Neil Asks for working with us on this event. And so we're going to have a reception.